So I was surprised at how many folks were requesting this video comparing the new Galaxy Book 2 360 to the Galaxy Tab S8. There are a surprising number of similarities here, but there is one big obvious difference, and I'm talking about operating systems. The Galaxy Book is a laptop that runs Windows. It also folds back into a tablet-like form factor, and that's great for drawing with the included S Pen. The Galaxy Tab, on the other hand, is a straight-up tablet running Android with Samsung's UI on it. What muddies the water a little Little bit is that Samsung with the Tab S8 Ultra is really going for that tablet slash laptop hybrid. And when you look at the Galaxy Book 360, it's kind of doing the same thing. By the way, my name's Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. Now, before I get too deep, I want to shout out to Opera. No, no, not the Opera, the browser Opera, the sponsor of today's video, and the best way to experience the web. There's a lot of stuff here that I love. First, Opera has a free VPN built right into the browser. A virtual IP address helps hide your location and lets you view the web with enhanced online privacy within the Opera browser. No subscriptions, no login, no data limits. I also love Opera's pinboard feature. It's a way to gather, save, and share links, videos, notes, whatever. See, I'm researching a new product for a video review I'm doing, I don't need to keep 20 tabs open anymore. I can save the product specs, promotional videos on the product, user reviews, and pull all of that information back up at a later date. I also find it super useful to have messaging apps built right in, whichever one you use, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram, they're all accessible all the time right here in Opera sidebar. What about music and podcasts? It's right there too, Spotify and YouTube music integrated directly into the browser. Have I mentioned the built-in ad blocker yet? You would be surprised how good the internet looks without all of that garbage cluttering everything up. There's also added benefits like not being tracked and also speeding up page load time. Ditch the default. Opera is free to download. Click my link down below in the description and thanks to Opera for sponsoring today's video. Enjoy. I think what's most important is you need to ask yourself, what will I be using this device for? email, web browsing, social media, illustration and drawing, video editing, graphic design, depending on how you're going to use it is really going to affect which one is probably the best fit for you. For example, if we're talking about straight up illustration, I kind of prefer going with the S8 tablet line of things. I just really like the touch-based interfaces, mainly because I think the touch-based interfaces work extremely well on a tablet, whereas Windows really relies on a lot of those keyboard shortcuts, and you lose those when you flip it around into the tablet form factor. Now, some of that earlier stuff I mentioned, like browsing the web, social media, emailing, both of these can do those things extremely well. But when you get into some of the higher end creative tasks, that's where I think a laptop tends to excel over a tablet. I don't really enjoy editing video on a tablet. There aren't any really great 3D apps on a tablet. But then again, I don't know if I would get this particular laptop, I'd probably want something a little bit more powerful if I was going that road. Samsung also has a feature on their Android devices called Dex. What? What exactly is Dex? Well, what it does is it turns your Android device into a Windows looking kind of device. So whenever you open any app, it's gonna open up into a window, very similar to like a Windows or Mac desktop interface. And you can move those around and you can resize them and it works surprisingly well. But at the end of the day, it's just Android that's running on top of everything. If you're using a Tab S8 with a keyboard, this really does have a very strong laptop vibe when you're using Dex. Now I'm gonna be completely honest here, and I've said this in other videos, Dex is a cool idea, but for me personally, I've never really gotten into it that much. I think there's two reasons for this. One, I really don't like the trackpad on the Galaxy Tab's keyboards. And the second reason is I just haven't spent enough time with it. I think if I spent more time with Dex, I'd be more familiar with it. In fact, for the sake of this video, I ended up writing this script on Dex and using it a lot more than I have in the past, just to get a little bit more familiar with it. And I still have some quirks with it that I'm not quite used to. Because Dex looks like Windows, I expect it to behave more like Windows. I have a folder open and I want to take an image from that folder and drag it into an app that I have open and then draw on it. That's how I'd work on the desktop, but it just doesn't work like that here. You can't drag anything out of programs or drag things from app to app. Everything is just sealed off the way Android apps are because these are 
Android apps. I would assume it's because the people who made the file app for Android just never expected it to be used this way, so it doesn't work that way. I look at these features as a nice extra, something that's cool to have, but not the main selling point of what you're going to be using these products for. For my work, I need a laptop, mostly for video editing and design, and just keeping my website up to date. I find that these tasks are easier to do on a laptop than they are on a tablet. You can use a tablet. You can definitely use a tablet. There are apps out there that will allow you to do these things, but I think it's so much easier to do them on a laptop. All right, let's talk about hardware. The Galaxy Tab's build quality is great. Now this is the best Android tablet out there. Full stop. The AMOLED screen looks spectacular. It's really pixel dense. It looks and feels like an iPad Pro in all of the best ways. You've got the squared off edges and the aluminum feels really premium and nice. The speakers, they sound really good for a tablet. In fact, they sound really good, period. The cameras on the front and on the back are both solid. This is Samsung top of the line phone blown up into this tablet form factor. Now the Galaxy Book is pretty good too. It feels solid for a Windows laptop. It's super light. That's its key feature. I love that. The hinges are a little bit floppy when you're tapping on the screen, using your hand to kind of move around things. You're definitely going to see that screen move quite a bit. It's also not going to stand up all by itself at lower angles, so you're not going to want to draw on it like that. Now, the screen on the Galaxy Book is it's pretty good. It's another one of Samsung's AMOLED displays, but it's only full HD, so you are going to see pixels on this, especially if you get up close to it when you're drawing. That's the biggest difference you're going to notice compared to its Android counterpart. One of the things that makes the Tab S8 feel more premium to me is the battery life and the fan noise or lack thereof. The Tab S8 Ultra's battery will last you all day. Now the Galaxy Book will last you, I'd say five to six hours when you're using most drawing apps or creative apps. Now for a laptop, that's, that's pretty good. But because the Tab S8 is using less power and because it has a more efficient Snapdragon chipset, you're going to see that battery difference. Whereas the book is running Intel, so it needs better cooling. That means fan noise. It also means you're going to notice the hot air kind of shooting out at you when it's in tablet mode. The book is also gonna get a lot warmer than the tab. The only time I noticed the Galaxy Tab getting warm on me is when it was plugged in and the battery was charging. And even then it doesn't get hot, just gets a little bit warm. Another thing to consider is typing. How much time are you going to spend typing on this and where are you going to be typing on this? The keyboard accessory that's available for the S8 Ultra is pretty expensive. It's $350 extra, so that's something you're gonna have to budget for. And it's only okay. It gets the job done. I mentioned in some earlier videos, I'm not really a fan of how Samsung has integrated the trackpad on this thing. There's this slight delay whenever you start using it, which makes the entire process feel laggier than it really is. Now the Galaxy Book keyboard is just better suited for long typing sessions. It's also better suited for using on your lap, whereas the floppy keyboard that you find on the Galaxy Tab is really a desk-based thing. The typing experience on both of these is, is okay. I find that the key travel on both is, is pretty low, but it gets the job done. It doesn't feel bad. Now, what about drawing? Both of these devices come with the S Pen packed in. Nice. Performance wise, it is the same exact pen and it performs the same exact way. These are very smooth pens. I don't get a lot of wobbly lines. They have these tiny little rubber tips, uh, which work pretty well on these glass screens. It gives you a little bit of resistance. Samsung has been improving the palm recognition on Android in regards to the S pens over the last few years. However, on their laptops, they've been pretty much in the same place as far as palm rejection goes for quite a while now. What what this means is you're going to have to go into the settings of Windows and many of your apps and play around and adjust the palm recognition and that sort of thing to make sure that you're toggling it off so you're not accidentally using your palm to select the wrong layer or leave extra dots lying around on your canvas. You can make it work but it's just not as well implemented as it is on the tab. How about software, specifically drawing apps? There are a ton of drawing apps available for Windows and many of them are the more fully featured professional apps that you think of when you think of drawing apps. If you wanna draw in Photoshop, go Windows. If you want a fully featured vector program like Adobe Illustrator or Affinity Designer, go with Windows. Plus on Windows, you're gonna have access to a whole bunch of creative apps that just aren't going to exist on Android. Blender for 3D work, 
Windows. What about Premiere Pro for video editing? Windows. Although, to be fair, and like I said before, this is probably not the computer I would go for if you're thinking about 3D rendering or video. But still, in a pinch, if you want to do a little bit of work here and there in those kind of applications, a laptop is probably the better choice. Now, this is not to say you can't find 3D apps or video editing apps on Android. You absolutely can. PowerDirector is a video editing app. LumaFusion is coming to Android. That's a video editing app that's been available on the iPad for a while. I've used both of those, and both of those are pretty good, but I still prefer just being able to have folders and just being able to drag files around. I like using Premiere Pro. That's what I'm familiar with, and that's what I like using. Now for drawing apps, Android is improving consistently. We've had Clip Studio Paint for several years now, which I just love. And on the 15 inch screen of the Tab S8 Ultra, it is so good, it is so good. I have gone on and on about it before. I probably will again. I, I think it works so well on a tablet. Crit is also out there for Android now too. That also looks really good on this large screen. It's a free open source painting app, really nice. Plus there's a whole smattering of more streamlined, smaller apps out there there like Concepts or Ibez Paint X or Infinite Painter. All right, so is there a winner? Well, the winner is Samsung because no matter which one you pick, Samsung gets your money. For me, which one is better for drawing? Well, like I said earlier, I prefer drawing on a tablet. It's just, it feels more fun to me. It feels more organic and natural. Just the way it's designed to work with touch screens and the pens are just very organic. But if you need those Windows apps, they're definitely there for you and that's where a laptop comes in. I think it comes down to if you you need a PC, but you don't need a ton of power, this is a really good choice and you can draw on it. I was genuinely surprised how many people came out and said, okay, Brad, which one should I get? And my answer is, I, I have no idea because the real answer is, how are you going to use it? And I can't answer that question for you. Only you're gonna really understand what you need it for. So hopefully this video was helpful in that regard. So let me know down below in the comments, what choice would you make? Or what things have I not considered when comparing these two devices? Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.